So the big news in the Robert F. Kennedy Jr. presidential campaign is that he has named two of his top contenders for VP pick, two of the names that top his shortlist. We're not sure how long the shortlist is, but the campaign is confirmed. Aaron Rodgers, quarterback for the Jets, also very controversial during the COVID pandemic. He was very outspoken against the COVID vaccine, didn't want to take it, didn't take it, got a lot of flack for that. Uh, and also Jesse Ventura, former governor of Minnesota, Jesse Ventura, and former wrestler, also host of um, The World According to Jesse on RT that ended up getting shut down at the beginning of the Russia-Ukraine war. So interesting picks. Aaron Rodgers is a total surprise. I don't think anybody saw that one coming. Jesse Ventura makes a little bit more sense. That is someone that I think people maybe would have speculated would have topped the VP selection. Uh, Jesse Ventura being a popular former governor, also somebody who's popular in the anti-establishment independent space, uh, somebody who doesn't seem to be left or right. He's got his own mind, and that that makes a lot of sense. Um, but, of course, people are freaking out, right? People are freaking out over this. Here's just an example. Here's a tweet. Uh, RFK Jr.'s top two VP picks, anti-vaxxer football player. Russian state-sponsored journalist, incredible, deeply serious campaign. So rather than saying, uh, you know, top quarterback in the NFL, outspoken, well-liked, people like Aaron Rodgers, and instead of saying former governor of Minnesota, you know, smearing, we're seeing a lot of smearing now happening with uh, against Aaron Rodgers calling him an anti-vaxxer, which has been going on for a while, but also Sandy Hook apparently uh, apparently, he had made some comments about Sandy Hook privately to Jake Tapper, publicly. Um, the, the, it seems to be a little bit mixed. Publicly, there were there were some videos of him being very um, sympathetic about Sandy Hook. And then there's other there's reports that he he's been saying things that's kind of akin to Alex Jones. So they're trying to smear Aaron Rodgers completely. Um, and also, of course, trying to get to Jesse Ventura. But let's watch this. This is Jake Tapper talking about Aaron Rodgers and um, and the Sandy Hook debacle. Here this is. CNN has learned that in private conversations, Rodgers has shared wild and unhinged conspiracy theories in which he claims that the 2012 Sandy Hook shooting was not real. CNN knows of two people with whom Rodgers has shared these views with, uh, including CNN's Pamela Brown. In 2013, when CNN's Pamela Brown was covering the Kentucky Derby, she was introduced to Rogers. Hearing that she was a journalist at CNN, Rogers began attacking the news media for, quote, covering up important stories. Rogers then brought up the Sandy Hook shooting and said the news media was intentionally ignoring that the shooting wasn't real, that it was a government inside job. I remind you, the shooting, of course, was very real, very tragic. 20 children and six adults were murdered that day. When Pamela Brown asked Aaron Rodgers for evidence of what he was talking about, Rodgers then began sharing various theories that have been disproven numerous times by evidence. Rodgers falsely claimed to Pamela Brown that there were men in black in the woods by the school, and he asked if she thought that was odd. Brown says that she found the entire encounter disturbing. Okay, so we're starting to see these types of smears against Aaron Rodgers. That's going to ramp up. Uh, Jesse Ventura, there's, what's interesting about Jesse is he doesn't align with RFK on quite a few points. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, obviously him and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. align when it comes to COVID. They were very much aligned during that. Uh, I don't know if they were friends prior to that or if they became friends during the pandemic because Aaron was really outspoken and RFK Jr. was really outspoken, but they align on that. I don't know where Aaron falls on other topics. Uh, of course, there's these smears of him maybe questioning things and they're going to call him a conspiracy theorist because of the vaccine, which I don't know how anybody could call anybody a conspiracy theorist at this point regarding the vaccine, but I guess it's hard to convince people. Um, even when the, all the facts are in front of them, that they were not right, they were wrong, they were completely wrong. But anyway, uh, I'm sure more stuff will surface of Aaron Rodgers. I'm sure he said many controversial things. I'm sure he's got a lot of interesting opinions. Uh, people are asking RFK Jr. to denounce Aaron Rodgers' past statements on Sandy Hook. Some people are saying these are not true. 
that the public videos that we have of Aaron Rodgers are of him being very sympathetic towards Sandy Hook and that these are just smear campaigns. That's very possible. But of course, the establishment's going to do what the establishment's going to do when it comes to trying to thwart Robert F. Kennedy Jr. The issue with RFK Jr. is nobody knows who's he's going, who he's going to take votes from. Is he going to be taking votes from Donald Trump or is he going to be taking votes for Biden? Who is he going to be a spoiler for? Most of the people are not talking about RFK Jr., as somebody who um, as somebody who would win the presidency, I think they've kind of they're just thinking he's going to be a spoiler for one or one or the other. Now, he has to choose his VP candidate. I don't know if I said this already, but he has to choose because uh, it states he's an independent candidate, not on a Democratic ticket, not on a Republican ticket. States require some of the states require independent candidates to name their running mate before they can qualify for being placed on the ballot. And many of them have their deadlines coming up soon. So he's under the debt. He's under the gun selecting his VP running mate. Uh, one person people have been speculating was Tulsi Gabbard. A lot of people wondered if she would be on his short list. She is no longer on the short list. According to reports, Tulsi Gabbard stopped cooperating with the campaign, quote unquote, uh, what that means is they're saying that she was going through the VP vetting process and then suddenly stopped going through the process and then turned around and was campaigning for Donald Trump, hosting a fundraiser for him in Mar-a-Lago. So they believe that she is now looking to go for the VP slot for Donald Trump and not for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, Jesse Ventura. So let's get to him because this one's interesting. He was not aligned with RFK Jr. when it comes to covid this is how he ended when he was doing his show on RT, The World According to Jesse, which shut down during the after the right at the beginning of the Russian Ukraine war, they shut down RT. He ended during the pandemic most of his shows like this. Uh, let's get this for you. CNN has learned that in. And always remember when the government lies, yes, the truth becomes a traitor. Stay vigilant, get vaccinated, social distance. Be smart, people. Stay vigilant. <laughs> Stay vigilant. Get vaccinated. Uh, that's what he said. So, you know, this is very different. Let's just play that one more time. And always remember, when the government lies, yes, the truth becomes a traitor. Stay vigilant. Get vaccinated. Social distance. Be smart, people. Stay vigilant. So he's very different when it comes to RFK on COVID. Jesse Ventura was very much pro-mandate, pro-vax. Um, I, he might have shifted towards the end. A lot of people did, but during it, he was not in line. And I think it's easy to shift and change your mind after the fact. Uh, I, I mean, great if you do, but at the same time, it's like, well, that's not, that's not brave or gutsy to change after the fact, after you've seen, you know, after it's just so blatantly obvious. Now, where does Jesse Ventura fall when it comes to Israel-Palestine? That's going to be the big question that a lot of people are going to have with both of these candidates or anybody that he names onto the VP. And my guess is because of the way his stance has been, and I'm guessing he's heavily funded by uh, by the, the lobby, by the Israel lobby, I would assume that anybody he selects needs to be pretty much on board. Aaron Rodgers hasn't said really anything. I looked through his Twitter account. I've looked for anything that he said. He has said nothing, absolutely nothing about any of it whatsoever. Now, Jesse Ventura did a show for RT. So, of course, he had to cover various conflicts, including anything going on with Israel, Gaza, Israel, Palestine. And he says pretty much the same thing. I went through a lot of his old episodes. I'm going to show you one so you can see for yourself. But he pretty much says the same thing in every single episode. Uh, watch this. The Israeli military has launched more airstrikes on the Gaza Strip this week after leveling a 12-story building over the weekend, where the Associated Press, Al Jazeera, and other media offices were located. Occupants were reportedly warned via phone and given one hour to evacuate. No one was hurt, but press freedom groups accused the Israeli military of trying to censor coverage of Israel's actions since it hasn't yet given any evidence that Hamas was using the building for military intelligence and making weapons, as claimed. U.S. Secretary of State Tony Blinken also says he hasn't seen any evidence that Hamas was operating in the building and has asked Israel for proof. 
The French media watchdog Reporters Without Borders is now calling on the International Criminal Court to investigate Israel's bombing of at least 23 international and local media offices in the past week as a possible war crime, stating that it has strong reason to believe that Israel intentionally targeted them to reduce or neutralize the media's capacity to inform the public. Jesse, for a long time, mainstream media coverage of the decades-long conflict has been biased in favor of Israel. But we've recently seen some dissent, especially after human rights groups have publicly accused Israel of committing crimes of apartheid against Palestinians. Okay, so she lays this all out, talking about the targeting of journalists, these buildings that the IDF accused had Hamas in them and and but these were these were journalist buildings. This is where the news media was being housed, and they leveled the building. You saw the video; they leveled it. So you've got his co-host here saying, "Look at all this terrible stuff. Look at these journalists that are being targeted." Here's Jesse Ventura hosting a show like a journalist. You know, you think you'd be on the side of journalists, but this is his response to this. And this is again the response every show I've seen for every aspect of the conflict. Again, this is before this year, so this is 2020, you know, before February of 2022. But this is his response, and it's the same every time. Yeah, well, you know, that's going to happen in these types of wars. And plus the fact, as I've stated many times, you've got two religions butting heads here. And you're going to have to get one of the religions to back off. Well, good luck on that. So he says it's a religious war, and he keeps saying this over and over. And when she says, look, they're blowing up these buildings with journalists, and journalists are alarmed, and goes, yeah, well, that's going to happen. I mean, that is not the right answer. That is not the right answer. The right answer is we are funding this government. We're funding this military. We're funding them, and they're targeting journalists. That is completely antithetical to Western values, to democracy, to free speech, to journalism, to a free press. And yet Jesse Ventura goes, yeah, well, it's going to happen because <laughs> it's— a religious war. I mean, what are you, you know, what are you going to do? And he goes on. He does. I, I, I selected this clip in particular because he, do, he is a little better in this one than he, than he has been in the other clips I saw where he just sticks to, it's a religious war. What are we going to do? There's nothing we can do. And until these two people decide, just tell these two groups, these two religions decide to stop killing each other, um, you know, because God said, don't kill. So uh, then that, should, that that's all he says in nearly every this one, he actually does give a little bit more um, insight to it, or he's, you know, so that's why I selected this one for you, because it's the most generous, I would say, on his viewpoint on the conflict. So let's keep watching. These religions don't seem to want to do that. And again, I'll repeat myself. All these religions live by the thing, thou shalt not kill, but except in the case of government. Then they grant a pass. It's okay to kill if you're killing behest of a government. I don't particularly agree with that anymore. I think killing is killing regardless of if it's government sanctioned or not. And the tough part about this is, is that we, the United States of America, continue to support Israel blindly in this, and yet we still stand out there and try to say we're neutral on it. How can we possibly say we're neutral when we support Israel both with weapons and everything else? That's like going back to Vietnam and saying, well, we support all of Vietnam, but we're going to help the South out. We're going to give them weapons and we're going to give them everything they can possibly fight with. But we're neutral as far as the whole thing goes. It doesn't work that way. The proof's in the pudding. The proof's in what you do and who you support with things like military equipment. And clearly, we're not arming the Palestinians. We're only arming the Israelis. So how can we claim neutrality? This is the fourth major conflict in Gaza between Israel and Hamas since 2008. Gaza is a self-governing Palestinian territory with two million residents. It's controlled by Hamas, which won Palestinian elections back in 2007. Since then, Israel and Egypt have implemented a blockade that has devastated the territory and prohibited Palestinian residents from leaving. That's why Gaza is widely referred to as the world's largest open-air prison. More than 50 years of occupation and over a decade of blockade have made Palestinians' lives absolutely unbearable. At least 42% of capable adults there are unemployed. 
84% of the population is in need of humanitarian aid, and 41% struggle to find food. 98% of the water in Gaza is contaminated and undrinkable, and the territory only gets two to four hours per day of electricity. Jesse, I know that you say this is about religion, but I want you to consider looking at this through the lens of colonization, with occupiers versus the oppressed. One group, the Israelis, have a state and military and have illegally annexed land under international law. And the other group, the Palestinians, are living with no rights and no state under what the international community is increasingly referring to as apartheid. That means sanctioned racial segregation and political and economic discrimination. So you saw when, after Jesse went on his rant about, well, this is a religious war and that's just going to happen, after she goes on and talks about journalists are being targeted, they're leveling buildings with journalists in them with no evidence of any sort of, you know, of Hamas being in those buildings. And Jesse goes on his rant about it being a religious war and then she kind of goes, you know, like shocked and then says, okay, now let's talk about all these humanitarian issues and she lays it all out. Now, remember, this is before uh, October 7th. This, this, they're talking about a conflict in 2021 around this time, actually. It was around, uh, actually, this one, I'm not 100% certain, but a lot of times it happens around, it might have been May. Um, and this is his reaction to everything she just said. Oh, I agree totally with you, Brigida. You can have both. That's the whole thing. You can have a major religious war and the prevailing religion can then take over and colonialize the other religion. And that's exactly what you've got happening here. You've got the, the Israelis colonializing the Palestinians, making them live under conditions that are inhumane. They should not be allowed in the international community. And anyone who states they're religious at all should be opposed to this type of behavior. So they go hand in hand. If you look, religious wars go right along with colonialism. Because once one religion starts to prevail, they will implement colonialism upon the other religion. And that's exactly what you have going on here with Israel and Palestine. My point is, and always has been, nothing is going to change unless the two religions change their thinking, and getting religion to change its thinking is, and of itself, a major, major undertaking, which generally is not successful. So colonialism goes hand in hand, and it's the colonialism part that the U.S. and the international community needs to step in and say, enough is enough, Israel. Palestinians de deserve a, a simple life and a life that's worth living and not under your direct rule necessarily. Okay, so, you know, it's, it, it, his position isn't terrible, uh, and that was a couple of years ago. Now, what would it be today if he does become RFK Jr.'s running mate? Would he have a different stance? A lot of people changed their minds after October 7th, some in favor of Israel, some in favor of Palestine. So it would be interesting to see how he flipped, if he flipped at all. Uh, but that's his response. So now you know what he, he was like on this particular issue, which is a big point for the RFK Jr. campaign, or at least it's going to be. I would imagine that Jesse Ventura and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. agree on pretty much everything else when it comes to endless wars. I would imagine that they agree on uh, the alphabet security state, you know, getting the CIA, the FBI, and all of the, the various different um, – uh, you know, uh, some of our rights that have just been dwindled away. I would imagine that they would agree on those things. But it's interesting that COVID, they definitely did not agree on. And maybe that would be strategic for the RFK Jr. campaign. Maybe it would be strategic to select somebody who was pro-vaccine, pro-mandates, pro-lockdowns, pro-all of those things. Perhaps that is uh, what the what the campaign needs in order to not be labeled an anti-vax campaign, as it would be with Aaron Rodgers. And with Aaron Rodgers, there seems to be a lot of other problems there with him and some of his past statements or his past thinking or, you know, they'll, they'll smear him like Alex Jones. But Jesse Ventura is a bit older. Jesse Ventura, uh, I had a conversation with him. I mean, he's, I think he's, uh, I, I like the guy. He's very likable. He's very nice. I think there would have been a great a, a period of time when he would have made a great presidential candidate or even a VP candidate. But I'm not sure if he's fully with it anymore, to be honest with you. I interviewed him. Uh, about a year ago. You can watch that full interview. I have that link down below. You could see for yourself, but it was 
entertaining and a little nutty. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> a little nutty. But let me just, I want to play this one clip for you. I did ask Jesse Ventura about running for president because people are definitely wishing that he would uh, and, and hoping that he would. And now with being a potential VP pick, you know, maybe people will get their wish. But here's what he had to say to this question. Here was his response. You know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get right to it, but people want you to run for president. It looks like our option is going to be Trump or Biden. And many people are hoping Governor Jesse Ventura jumps into the race. What are, what's well, the chance that you would run for president? Governor Jesse Ventura tried last time through the Green Party, and it was a miserable failure because they're fractured. It would have required me to bring the party back together and then in the meantime, take on the Democrats and Republicans. Not even I can do that. Not even me. I need a party behind me. I need, like I had in Minnesota, the Independence Party. When I ran in Minnesota, we had one person paid. One. That was my campaign manager because he left his private sector job to do it full time. Everybody else was a volunteer. That's how come I was able to get elected and only raise $300,000, which I spent on TV ads to show you're a legitimate candidate. Now, getting back that's to the not question very much. at hand. That's not very much, that's actually. Right. Considering <laughs> the other side spent $12 million. Yeah. Anyway, getting back to your question, Jesse Ventura can run, but there's obstacles that have to be in place. I must have ballot access in all 50 states. So you could do that I don't with the Libertarian the machine- Party. Well, I don't have the machinery to do that. Well, are the Libertarians going to nominate me? Maybe. No. They're going to get like the Greenies did. You know what the Greenies said about me? One of them actually said, well, is he one of us? And I thought, how offensive is that when the reason I became mayor of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, was over the fight for a wetland? Isn't that what the Green Party stands supposed to stand for? So if they'd have looked at their history, they'd know it was the it, it was the environment that brought me into politics originally. So I need ba- getting back. I need ballot access in fifty states, and then in order to win, here's another big obstacle: you must be allowed in the debates. And guess who controls the debates? The Republican and Democratic Party, right. and they saw what I did in Minnesota. Do you think for one minute they're going to make the same mistake and allow me in the debates to beat them again? Remember this: in Minnesota, I was polling nine percent at the primary. Seven weeks later, I was allowed to be in the debates. Three or four of them, I won the election. In but you don't seven- need to be in those debates anymore, you know, because now you've got independent. Oh media. yeah, you you've do. got. Well, you've got guys like Joe Rogan who would have you on the show if you were running for That's president. That's fine. Ah, uh-uh. I need the debates. I need to look them in the eye and cause them to crumble. <laughs> oh, the whole interview is really, really interesting to watch. You really should watch the entire interview. Again, that link is uh, that link is down below to the interview. It, and, you know, and you'd be you'd be the judge. He was, I think, on this particular point about whether or not he should run for president again. Uh, I think he made really valid points. I think he makes a really great case regarding his previous campaigns and uh, and, and whatnot. But some of the some of the some of the interviews a bit. You know, just watch it for yourself and decide. But you know, people love Jesse Ventura. What people love about him is he's honest and he just says what he thinks. And so you know, if I mean that's that's a good thing in a political environment like ours. So I think people are willing to. Especially, I mean, people are absolutely 100% willing to stomach a candidate who might be brash, uh, might say some kooky things here and there. Uh, certainly people don't mind it with Donald Trump. Certainly Democrats don't mind it with Joe Biden. <laughs> so I think with Jesse Ventura, people would also not mind it with him. Uh, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. would, of course, still be the main candidate. It wouldn't be Jesse Ventura. But I think this is an interesting, uh, my vote is on on this combination, RFK Jr. and, and Jesse Ventura. Don't agree with Jesse Ventura on certain things like COVID. Don't agree with Robert F. Kennedy on certain things like Israel Gaza. But that's, you know, I 
I, but, you know, and I don't even know if I'd vote for this ticket, but I think it's a good ticket. I think it's a strong ticket. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to get him anywhere. So I think he's better off with Jesse Ventura. But people will then say, oh, but Jesse Ventura is this like fringe politician. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is a fringe politician. So, um, but very interesting. And he says he's going to make the announcement officially. I believe March 26th is the day that we're going to get the actual who his running mate is going to be. So we don't have too long to wait. It's coming up here in just a couple of weeks. So we will we'll keep a lookout who's going to be Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s running mate. Very interesting. Exciting times. Hey, guys, be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you like this segment. Now, you might be wondering, this seems like it's part of a bigger show. You're right, it is. The full show is at KimIversonShow.com. So what you're watching is just a clip. And if you want to get the full experience, then you got to go to KimIversonShow.com. The show airs Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern at KimIversonShow.com. That is where you can watch the full show. Here, you just get clips. So click on the link down below. Go to the full show. Enjoy. Otherwise, I'll see you next time right here. And be sure, once again, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.